Our breathing can deepen and become irregular. Our heart starts to race. Our pupils dilate, which might be one of the reasons so many people close their eyes during a kiss. There are three sensations that one should really recognize when they're kissing. First of all, there's the wonderful feeling of touch because our lips are extremely sensitive. We have more uh, nerve neurons on the end of our lips than any other place in our body with except some areas in our genitalia. And then, of course, also there's taste. Each individual has a unique taste to them. And some people are much better at recognizing taste than others. And then, of course, there's also smell. Ovid in um, some of his poems talked about kisses smelling like uh, ripening uh, apples in a chest. There's a lot of theories as to why we kiss, but some of it may have to do with our earliest experiences on planet Earth. When we're infants, through being kissed by parents and also through nursing, through a lot of lip stimulation that becomes associated through neural pathways in our brain with these very, very positive emotions. And so we're building these neural pathways that attribute kissing and lip stimulation with love and security and all of these wonderful things that later in life when we want to express ourselves that way, we probably do so using our mouths. While we can't dip ourselves back in time and kind of discover when and where and how the first kiss took place among humans, what we do know is that other species are very attracted to the rosy bottoms of females when they're at peak fertility, when they're in estrus. There are some anthropologists that think that the lips are what's called a genital echo, so they mimic the female genitals in shape, composition, color, and texture, and they serve as a reliable indicator of when a woman might be ready to mate. Desmond Morris, a British zoologist, he's actually done some research on lipstick showing different men images of women's faces, asking who the most attractive are. And over and over and over, men are consistently choosing the women who are expressing the rosiest, most colored lips in these studies. So there's something that does draw our attention to the mouth. And the color red is a color that many species use to exhibit this sexual signal. The earliest evidence that we find of any kind of kissing is about 2,500, maybe 3,500 years ago in some of the early Vedic texts that come from India. It turns out that the area right below your eyes uh, has sebaceous glands that produce a unique smell for each individual. So these ancient Indians in northern India were sniffing each other, and as of course if they ran their noses across the cheeks of each other and then across the nose to the other side of the cheek, I think that occasionally some of them slipped and may have ended up on the lips. And because the lips are so sensitive, they may have found that that was much more pleasurable than just sniffing each other. The Romans can be looked upon really as probably the first great kissing culture. They had different kinds of kissing. The Savium was what we might call a French kiss based on the word uh, saliva, which we still use today. And uh, of course, they enjoyed practicing this all the time. There's places where people just thought kissing was disgusting, which might not be that surprising when you consider that for the most part, people weren't brushing their teeth and flossing and using mouthwash and all these things we do today, where it would probably be a lot less appetizing not that long ago. However, it's something that even where we didn't do that, we were sniffing, we were patting, we were licking and sucking and nibbling and doing things all about each other's bodies to connect. And that connection is ultimately important for keeping us together, for keeping our bonds strong, for raising all of the different hormones and neurotransmitters in our bodies that make us maintain our important relationships. And kissing is a big part of that. <laughs>